This is National Native News. I'm Antonia Gonzalez. Construction on the Keystone XL pipeline remains on hold as an appeal to the Ninth Circuit plays out. That order came out Friday. The pipeline was stopped late last year when a federal judge put an injunction on the project until the U.S. State Department does more work on the permit. TransCanada had asked that the injunction be lifted while the appeal proceeds. Victoria Wicks has more. TransCanada has said in court filings that it needs to start building worker camps by March 15th to make the spring construction season. The company asked the Ninth Circuit to issue an interim order lifting the injunction by that date. Environmentalists are celebrating the appeals court's decision. Jackie Prang, a senior attorney with the Natural Resources Defense Council, plaintiffs in one of the lawsuits filed in Montana federal court. The pipeline certainly should not be built before TransCanada has all of its permits and when a lower court has found it, that the State Department violated the law. Prang says parties will now file briefs over the spring and summer and the Ninth Circuit will consider the issue after that. TransCanada has issued a written comment saying the company is assessing the decision and considering its options moving forward. Plaintiffs include a number of environmental and indigenous groups. Rosebud Sioux Tribe and Fort Belknap Indian Community are seeking to intervene on just one issue, the legality of the State Department's administrative process. I'm Victoria Wicks in Rapid City, South Dakota. Despite legal setbacks leading up to the 2018 midterm elections in North Dakota, tribes and voting rights advocates hope they can overturn a state voter ID law they say threatens voting for tribal members. Christine Trudeau has a second part in our series on native voting rights in North Dakota. She cooked up a special dinner, so she invited a bunch of people. Manoodle. <laughs> Standing Rock Sioux tribal member Terry Yellowfat is a retired teacher, and for our interview, we take shelter on a cold, windy Sunday afternoon in a car parked in front of his house. Terry has lived in this house in Fort Yates, North Dakota, for decades. Most of those years, he's used a post office box as his primary address, until recently, when his tribe issued him a street address for emergency response purposes. But that didn't line up with what state election officials had on file. The address that, when I look it up, that they're using now belongs to the local liquor store, bar. And uh, I was upset with that because I never drank in my life. <laughs> and here I am, I'm listed as a liquor store. The experience prompted Yellow Fat to join a lawsuit with the Spirit Lake tribe, saying the North Dakota law requiring a physical address in order to cast a ballot infringes on their constitutional right to vote. Jacqueline Dillion, an attorney from the Native American Rights Fund, says even though the Supreme Court would not block the law before the last election, the fact that the law's disproportionate harm to many other Native voters like Yellow Fat remains clear. We still know that there are hundreds of people, potentially thousands of of people out there that still don't have an ID. You know, there was a tremendous push this election, but we don't know and are skeptical that if the law remains on the books, people will have IDs going forward in the future. Dillion says the surprisingly large number of voter turnout last November was fortunate, but in the end, voters deserve a permanent solution to laws that erect barriers to their basic constitutional right, which is why NARF is continuing their legal challenges. Everybody was incredibly fired up about turnout and, you know, there was lines out the door, there were extended hours, and it just showed how many people did not have an ID going into the election. NARF is confident in their suit moving forward, and Terry Yellowfat remains vigilant looking ahead to the 2020 election. I am going to step forward again, even if it takes another court case. I'm Christine Trudeau. This story is a collaboration with the Solutions Journalism Network and Prairie Public Broadcasting. I'm Antonia Gonzalez. National Native News is produced by Kiwanak Broadcast Corporation with funding by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. For Native Americans affected by domestic violence, the Strong Hearts Native Helpline offers peer-to-peer -peer support and resources. It's safe, confidential, and toll-free at 844-7-NATIVE. Program support by the National Indigenous Women's Resource Center. Support by PrairieEdge.com, where you'll find a variety of buffalo items like robes, skulls, rattles, and drums. Serving the Native American community for over 36 years, located in Rapid City or online at PrairieEdge.com. Popular. Native Voice One, the Native American Radio Network.